Good morning. This is Bowtie David with actually my first full official tour of the raised beds. We, uh, in the last part, we looked at the outer gardens, but I did not show any of the raised beds and I've got to get this video recorded so that uh, I can harvest my beans. You're going to be amazed at what these beans are doing. They are just growing everywhere and I need to get them harvested because they're ready. So, uh, you know, it's funny, I'm editing my the first two parts and um, I can tell I was tired yesterday because I uh, just got back from a big long trip and at the beginning of the video, I'm just not smiling, very serious. And by the time I'm done with the video, I'm in a good mood. And uh, I really do enjoy sharing the garden. I give lots of, uh, tours of the garden to people here locally and people ask questions and I learn stuff from them and maybe they learn something from me or maybe get an idea which is really the whole idea here uh, you know if, if, if this inspires someone to to grow a, a tomato plant uh, that's exciting for me but uh, um, anyway so you'll notice this bed right behind me this uh, is eventually supposed to be like the lettuce garden and it's not doing very well. I've, uh, I grew a couple of lettuces in there. I grew some kohlrabi and um, not really having a whole lot of success. We did uh, eat some of this, uh, this romaine florenschluss, I think it's called. Uh, romaine, it's a green leaf with, uh, with maroon speckles. It's a, it's a pretty plant, but uh, uh, it kind of bolted pretty quick. Uh, I did plant some spinach down here uh that uh did nothing but bolt I, I planted it when the as soon as this bed was ready i had planted the row of spinach here in fact let's just let's just take a look at it so i think this is kind of funny this is my bolted spinach i think wait is that the spinach okay no i'm not sure um yes yes it is because here's another one down here uh i planted spinach they grew about three to five little leaves in fact, I had two rows here, and it was um, spinach something dale. Blo Bloomsdale? Oh, Bloomsdale spinach, that's right. Um, and uh, I, <laughs> if memory serves me right, it said it didn't bolt in the heat, but uh, obviously, I mean, all spinach does, but obviously we had too much heat, but we didn't have that much heat, so I don't know. Anyway, it was a little discouraging. We'll, we'll keep trying. Uh, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I just noticed something. This is bed number one. In fact, as we're sitting here, standing here by the back door, I just go left to right. There's bed number one is this C shape. Then bed number two is this long straight one. And then bed number three right now is an L shape, but maybe one day will be a C shape that's gonna match the other side. But uh, we don't have all our cushions out right now. I just brought a cushion out to sit on for, for uh, the intro. But I have been watching this water lily and been discouraged that it's not growing because it was eight leaves and that's it. But while I was gone to Arkansas, look at what has happened. There is a flower coming up and there's one, two, three, four more uh, tubers have developed from this one tuber. Oh my goodness. Jana, this is so cool. Uh, I am very excited. This is so encouraging. Uh, this is supposed to, this is a, I believe if I remember, if I remember correctly, this is like a pink flower, a beautiful little pink flower. It's called a rain lily. And, uh, I've actually just added the water. I, I, I had added the drip lines in here and uh, realized I hadn't added water to this pot and a couple of other pots and added it. And I think that may have been the thing that just really kicked it off. I would love one day to have a whole bunch of these throughout the, the property, but that is just really exciting. Look at that thing. It is going to be beautiful. Yet another flower, hopefully for the bees to enjoy. So, oh, there's one of our gnomes. Um, anyway, there's that Florentius romaine, and you can see it is seeding. 
So I'm gonna be letting that go some and then collecting seeds some. Uh, that right there is kohlrabi and the kohlrabi has not really formed much. I have noticed on this first one down here, it looks like it's getting ready to start forming. So we'll have to see, keep an eye on that. I do have a row of, uh, of uh, peas here and these are the peas that um, you can't eat the shoots because they're poisonous. Is that right? Or something. Anyway, I'd like to have them grow up here. They're supposed to be more decorative, uh, the flowers and so forth. But uh, here's some more over here. Um, one, two, three, four, five. I got to prop some of these up on the, uh, on the trail of six, seven, eight eight, nine, looks like nine of them growing up here. So, but this is all kohlrabi. These, these here and that over there is, is kohlrabi. We'll have to see how those do. Um, next we have a, another bag of garlic. And uh, as I've already discussed, in fact, we got one coming up. We, had, we did have some bad garlic this year um, and Seed Savers Exchange, it was so cool because they actually let us know and then refunded the money um, before it even arrived. But, uh, this here is what I harvested last year. Uh, the Enchilium Red that I harvested last year. And I'm afraid we're not going to have quite as much, uh, this year, but we'll have to see. I do have some, uh, uh, random, uh, garlics planted in, in bed too. I'll try to remember to point a couple of those out. Uh, okay. So ginger, uh, this ginger down here is obviously getting eaten. I uh, may need to address that, um, but this ginger looks really good as well. This one looks a little bit tattered. Uh, now, I want to say something about, um, no, no, there's another good ginger. Oh, we have more ginger here. Okay, so these four are all from ginger that I harvested. However, when I harvested the ginger, get this, when I harvested the ginger, um, the mother ginger, one of the two mother gingers that I had looked really surprisingly good. And so I planted both of them back in and one is here, the other is somewhere in here. This is the second year for the mother ginger to grow. Now, I don't know if it's not going to be as good a ginger or if it'll be just as good. Uh, I'm kind of anxious to find out. So anyway, that's kind of fun. Uh, Never, just never know. Uh, so we have some red acre cabbage. Uh, this is coming along pretty good. It looks like it's got some, some, uh, little bit of leaf, leaf damage there, as does this one. Uh, I want to let these grow to a head so we can have some real cabbage. Uh, I would like to make some sauerkraut. That's, uh, that's my exciting thing for this year. Uh, and look, oh, there's a nasturtium. How many times can we say nasturtium? So obviously this is my seedling bed. This is where things go to get seeded. I've, I found this piece of glass on the side of the road and um, it, it's a piece of tempered glass, cabinet door, I think. Uh, it's got the little um, metal plates in the corner there, but uh, I, uh, I put it there because I wanted to put the seedling trays out so they'd get water regular and regular, some more better sun and uh, the trays are over there on the on the on my seedling shelves, but um, every time one of these magnolia shells or leaves fell on it, it would kill seedlings. And you'll notice I don't have very many seedlings in there. Most of them are not taking. So it's been a really bad year for my pepper. That's mostly peppers. The one thing that is growing in that corner that is a Roma tomato. So there's a. Nasturtium in a cup. I still have a few nasturtium in a cup. There's a bunch of tomatoes in there that are really looking like they need to go out, but I simply do not have room. Uh, I did get a few uh, evil, uh, a couple of evil olive and a, uh, I can't remember what the other one's called, uh, from Nikki. Thank you, Nikki. Uh, I didn't talk about the uh, citronella plant. It's over there by the first magnolia tree, but um, there's a cutting from the citronella plant right down in there and there's another one. Uh, oh, here it is just to the left. That's a, that's a cutting from the citronella plant. And tell you what, citronella propagates easily. I am just amazed how easy 
citronella is to propagate. Uh, mind blown. I'm going to really be propagating that plant out this year. I wanna, I'd love to have dozens of those sitting around the property in uh, pots because they do great for the mosquito population. Um, there's some uh, thyme over there. If y'all remember, I was over in the asparagus bed. Couldn't remember what, what the, spy, the herb was. Pretty sure it was thyme, but I'm not positive. Um, now, right, those big leaves right there, that actually is Brussels sprouts on this side. That row, one, two, three, four, five uh, cups is Brussels sprouts, and those need to be planted out in the bed, something fierce. Uh, yeah, they need to get moving. Um, so down here, I have a, at this end of the, of the uh, trellis here, I have a random cucumber that's actually starting to do stuff. Uh, it doesn't have any tendrils. So it's, this is a bush style. Interesting thing is I have some bush, the exact same one uh, over on the other side here and they have tendrils and they're climbing. So there's some nasturtium underneath there. Uh, no telling what this is. That's a mint. Okay, it's not a mint, good deal. Uh, I didn't get the roots though. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where did it go? Uh, I don't know where I pulled that from. Okay, well, it'll grow again and I'll pull the roots. So again, this uh, this mulch here doesn't stop the, the weeds. It just makes it real easy to pull them up. See that? Just nothing for it to grab onto. And the soil is nice and fluffy under there. So the plants that I want to grow have plenty of good stuff. Now this, look at the tomatoes growing on this volunteer from last September. September of last year, this plant grew over the winter. Um, this could be a Princeit Borghese. I am not sure. Uh, I didn't have it labeled, but I noticed it was growing in a grow bag and I just let it go. And so, uh, and here's a, here's a dino kale. And these dino kale have gotten a little bit bitter. I haven't tried this one yet. Ooh, that's actually pretty good. Oh my goodness, these young leaves are tasty. Uh, but once this thing bolts, it's, it changes the flavor of the leaves. These older leaves are a little bit tougher, not quite as good. Um, but uh, anyway, so uh, this kale is kind of, is, was cut off from our kale tree over there in the blackberries. Uh, I've talked about that before. But uh, um, I just took off, just to experiment, I took off a um, hunk of, of the, you know, something growing out the side of the trunk and stuck it in the ground here. And there's another one over on the other side of bed two. But uh, this here is another volunteer, and I don't notice it is also starting. I think this is probably a Princeit Borghese also. It uh, looks like about right. It's, it's, it's a relatively large cherry tomato type thing, um, but it is really taking off. It is a determinant, so uh, it, uh, it will, it's supposed to stop growing at a certain height and give all its fruit and be done, which is why they're kind of over there, one there and one over here on the other side, trying to give them a chance to live their life. So anyway, we have uh, more of the, uh, that's a Princeit Borghese growing over there in the corner. We'll come around the other side. Oh, there's a, there's a red nasturtium growing down there. Uh, these here are black sea man. Uh, I, I believe all the way down to this one are, is all black sea man tomatoes. And uh, those are pretty good. They're kind of a red bottom and a dark top, uh, kind of like a Cherokee purple, mm, maybe. Um, but you look, look here, they're, they're starting to give off their buds. We're going to have those pretty soon. Now these are not looking as good. Um, and I'm not sure why. In fact, uh, when this one failed, I planted another one. Well, the second one has failed right here. So what that tells me is probably that there's a problem with my soil right there. Now, when, uh, when I first filled this bed, and there's another um, Nebraska wedding there, it seems to be doing pretty good. These two are kind of struggling along this one here and this one over here, kind of struggling. But whatever happened to that bed right there, it might be that the dirt's too thin or it might have gotten a clump of something. But you can see how much the soil has dropped here. When I first did this bed, the soil was mounded above that white tile, white brick. Um, 
by maybe about that much higher. So it's dropped almost a foot, which I knew was going to happen. It's a brand new bed. It's got Christmas trees in the bottom, about a foot of uh, yard waste that includes uh, live oak, oak, um, uh, maple leaves, all kinds of leaves, and then a foot of uh, compost, the horse bedding compost that we used, uh, and then about an inch, uh, a, a generous inch of this wood chip compost on top. But, uh, uh, and it does pretty good holding the moisture in. Of course, the drip line should be put down before the mulch. Uh, I did not have drip line at that time. We used all overhead out here and all this drip line has been replaced and we're gonna have to organize this better next year, so. But now this is exciting. This is Suyo Long. It is a cucumber. It grows really long. In fact, you can see there's one right here that's coming out. There's also, oh my, oh looky here, it's been eaten. All right, time to bring out the BT and the neem and stuff because uh, that one's already been eaten. This is supposed to be an insect resistant cultivar. Uh, it doesn't mean insect proof, obviously, uh, but y you should take measures. Uh, and uh, BT uh, is a uh, natural, both of them are organic. Uh, BT is is a bacteria that attacks the stomachs of caterpillar-like insects, pests. And the neem takes care of others. And I can even spray, um, oh, diatomaceous earth on there as well. But see, these things are going to start really popping. Uh, and we need to... We need to give these guys some attention now. I'm not sure. You'll notice how much lighter those are. Same exact bag of seed. These came out really light. These are the early one. That's a later one that I planted. And look how green it is. And it has just shot past everything. It's, it's amazing. So keeping an eye on that thing, it's going to take over this whole arch trellis, which this is just a 16-foot uh, cattle panel comes back down and there's that first cucumber that we saw uh, at the very beginning of this trellis. Um, that grow bag over there is um, one of the dead garlics that I got that they, they shot up. I was very excited because they shot up about so big. They got maybe nine inches tall and then they all died. Um, and this is spearmint over here. I actually thinned this out. If you if you saw that on a previous video, video, it was packed full. Well, I thinned it out. In fact, here's some of the roots. I just leave them laying out here, and the roots will die. The the uh, the soil will will come out, and uh, I just leave them there to die. Uh, mint you don't want to play with. It will. It it is a disservice to your neighbors for miles around because unchecked it will it will take over a city and uh, it's it's some pretty rough stuff so anyway again i haven't really got out here to to do much weeding yet i have to do that but uh this so this, this is our bag of carrots uh actually they're looking pretty good they were they were struggling um but look at there That's a carrot right growing right there. There's another one kind of getting pushed out, but it's still growing. Um, and uh, let's see, right above the carrot on the same drip line, we have some uh, zinnias. We have one of my only magnolias that I managed to get to seed. Um, I'm not sure what is this. What is this? This isn't, uh, is this my, oh my, I finally got some dill. Oh, that smells so good. We have dill. I don't remember what these are in here. We'll just have to see what comes up, but they are coming up. These, these zinnias, oh man, look at this, look at this flower. Is that on it? That's a pretty flower. That is just very nice. I started growing zinnias last year. This is a polar something. Beautiful zinnia. There's another one coming out over here. This is probably something different. Uh, 
But so coming around the back side of this bed, and just as a point of reference, there's uh, the last watermelon mound. Here's my big Satsuma orange tree, and we get over to the Egyptian walking onions are back behind there. But uh, so this is another <laughs> dead bag of garlic. It's, it's kind of a joke now. It's been kind of funny, but you'll notice behind here, these are the same cucumbers. <gasps> oh my goodness. There's a cucumber on here. Little squatty thing. I need to feed this thing up the uh, cage. Uh, looks like it's trying to come up, pull itself up, but there it is. <laughs> a funky shaped cucumber on that. I'm glad I saw that. Another discovery. I just got back from my big trip um, the other night. Here, this one definitely needs to get affixed to the support for it to get some pollinators in here. Of course, we have our bees, so they're doing the job. You can see the uh, nasturtium are really suffering in here. And you know, this is the first year on this bed. Um, I told you the layers and everything. I knew it was gonna be not gonna be a very good year. It was just a given. So, uh, oh, look, I see a new little dill growing down there. There's a mother dill. That's exciting. I actually planted a, an L-shaped row. Oh, there's another one right there. Oh, goody, we're gonna have some dill. Uh, I planted kind of a funky L-shape, which is why this thing is here, uh, an L-shaped um, row of this dill. Seeds of Change dill I got from Lowe's. So, right with the cucumbers. How how uh, appropriate is that? We'd like to get some picklers out of these if we can. I got another cucumber over in bed three. So this is the row of uh, Nebraska wedding that are suffering. Uh, still, I'm pretty sure that it's the soil. Uh, next year, we'll be bringing in another two or three uh, loads of... Uh, of soil, maybe six to 10 yards of, of this compost. Um, it's not, I don't know that it's the best stuff, but hey, it works and it's free. So I go pick it up and go with it. So looky there, there's a grass growing in this peppermint right here. Now this is my mother peppermint plant. It's right about there, I think is my mother peppermint that it, all the peppermint in my garden comes from. So this thing, I just, in fact, it's so funny. When I first pulled the ball out of here, the roots were solid. The whole mass was a solid hunk of roots. And I just took that uh, trowel and I cut out a section and stuck it in another bag and cut out another section. And actually I left this, this wasn't, but maybe that big. And it's already, it's already growing out, uh, out here and it'll fill in here. You can see it's already trying to come out here. That's that's new growth right there. So mint, it spreads like wildfire. Now this right here, some of you may recognize, some of you may not, but looky here. Looky what I just found. Oh my, it's gonna be an okra. Oop. We have our first two okra coming. Let's see where to go. There it is. First two okra coming out here. That is exciting. So this is our okra. We have uh, something like 20 plants in here, but we really only have room for 17. Like these two here are very close together. Um, and I'll probably end up cutting one of these once they get a little taller. Again, over here, these two are really close together. I'll, I'll end up cutting off one of those. I need to go in here. Uh, same thing there, two, two okra one of them needs to get cut off. Otherwise they're gonna be crowding each other out. But uh, the okra's growing strong. You can see that big one there. You got another big one here. Just getting ready to start letting loose some okra. That is very exciting. We love our fresh okra. Fresh out of the garden, uh, fried, whatever. Tons of things you can do with okra that are delish. So all this is, is okra in here. And it's on the sunny side of our garden. So it should be happy, we hope. So here's my Principe Borghese. Um, oh, looky there, we have buds. I've been watching for buds. 
uh, but I hadn't been I hadn't really looked at it closely uh, since Pete coming back but we have all kinds of buds on here getting ready to start shooting tomatoes out at us that's exciting so that over there is a spearmint urn and this one here is sweet mint and uh, this one was the same way it was it was chock full of mint and uh, somewhere around here oh yeah over here this is all the the dead mint and I mean look at the root on these look at the bottom solid mass of roots so you gotta when if you've got mint you really do have to chop out hunks of it big hunks of it and give it some more space to grow so this will this will thrive for the year I cut out about two-thirds of it and put the rest in with new new compost and it'll take off it'll be good okay so whatever this is down here this is taking off got a couple of tomatoes down here Ooh, you know what these are I think they're Princeep Bourguets that's what I'm going on judging by the size and the and the profusion of uh, tomatoes and there's a lot of them in there so this is our time mm, 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 mm. oh we have a shishito over here I need to get this thing planted we'll get to bed three now you see there's some insect damage on these uh, Brussels sprouts uh, Oh, there's a purple jalapeno. Oh, oh my. That doesn't look well. I'm going to cover those roots up a little bit. Okay. I don't like the way that those roots looked uncovered. I don't have any water right here, so I'll get that here in a little bit. But now, okay, so this is a funny plant. I have no idea what it is. This volunteered somewhere, and I thought, that is an interesting leaf. Um, little purple leaf of some kind. I know it's some kind of weed, I'm sure, but I'm going to let it grow, see what it turns into. It was actually, came up in the same pot as this shishito. You can see these magnolia leaves. They're real thick, real heavy. Um, and when they land on something, they, especially a seedling, they kill it. So maybe one day I'll just find a piece of glass to put over all this a little higher as well. But I do like the seedlings under there. Uh, I'm gonna try that, try some more on that. But you can see nothing is outside of the the Roma tomatoes and that one purple jalapeno. Nothing is growing in there. I need to just dis dismantle this and be done with it. And we're back on the other side of the ginger. Now I do want to show you one thing. Uh, last time I talked about feeding, and we talked about this. Uh, this stuff I got at Lowe's, this Dr. Earth Homegrown Organic Natural Handcrafted Blend, and it's a 463, and this is more for the beginning life of your plants. Uh, roots, uh, shoots, roots, and fruits. So it's really trying to push root development, which is important, and um, in, in the beginning of life. And it's, this says tomato, vegetable, and herb. Well, the component that needs to be higher or fruit production is really low. And so I'll use this in the beginning life. And then this here is what I use. This is Spoma Organic Tomato Tone, tomato and vegetable food. And this stuff is good. Now I did go get an 18 pound bag because I'm doing something for a customer. Um, but if you look on the back here, you see it has three, four, six. And what that is, remember, shoots, roots, and fruit. So it's going to get um, decent root development, some greens, but it's going to have more focus on the fruits of whatever you're growing. And so this is after the initial stage for your plants. So this is what I put on. And now here's an important thing also, uh, something that attracted me to this. I actually tried a few different ones, but this calcium right here, it says it's at 8%. It's the highest calcium content, um, that I could find. Um, but when you have blossom end rot on your tomatoes, the problem is the uptake of calcium. And I forget some of these other things help with the uptake, but it also provides a lot more calcium just to ensure that it's there to be uptaken. 
and uh, this stuff has always cured my blossom end rot. Last year was the worst I'd ever had, um, but, and, and uh, I put this on and within three weeks, my blossom end rot was strongly subsided. And within six weeks, I was having great tomatoes. And, uh, and this is the only thing that I put in it. Now I was growing in grow bags. Uh, so the soil, um, it was potting soil and uh, it was losing nutrients, of course, and I love grow bags. If I didn't have these garden beds, I'd grow in grow bags. Oh, wait a minute, I still grow in grow bags. I still grow in grow bags. I still grow in grow bags. Um, yeah, I like my grow bags. They're awesome. So looking at this bed, kind of an overview, this is bed number two. And from left to right, you can see we have the end of the arch trellis. Over here we have peas. Uh, we have the end of the arch trellis. We have a big, big trellis in the middle there, and it goes over to another arch trellis. So we're going to start right in here, and uh, right in this, we're in front of, and, and again, these two grow bags were volunteer tomato plants from last year. Uh, they have just taken off, and this one's producing. This is our first producer this year. I have no idea what it is. They're very tender, very tasty. Uh, we've even had so many, we've some of them have fallen off and rotted. But uh, right down here below, we have our onions. Uh, and, oh, these need a little TLC, I see. They've had a little bit of uh, leaves and stuff thrown at them. But uh, this is just a random bed of onions. Um, I, I tried to do this a few different places. This is the only one that's been successful. Uh, there are some onions over the other side, which, which are from start. Now, I'll, I'm going to cover this trellis right here this right here you can see is starting to grab on and if i come around oh hey there's another magnolia i guess i lied i have a couple of magnolia that took this year and i've got something else growing up in here and i have no idea what they are we'll just have to find out oh it looks like some some time coming up in there maybe but uh so anyway this is a kiwano and uh sea saver exchange one of the people that not sea saver baker creek uh, rareseeds.com. Uh, they introduced this a number of years ago and it has become very popular. Look up uh, Kajari, not Kiwano, Kajari, K-A-J-A-R-I. Go Google Kajari for an image of, of this um, melon. It's a personal size sweet melon. And uh, I grew it because Jess over at Roots and Refuge kept raving about it. And I thought, okay, I'm going to have to try this. And then someone else raved about it, and I keep hearing the Kajari melons. Oh, I've got my Kajari melons coming. And again, you can see we've got uh, male flowers. See, there's there's no fruit on the base of that. There's another male flower. Here's another male flower. This is a really good one right here because you can see there is no fruit on that stem. But, uh, no, I can't see any female flowers yet. But it's going to start shooting out female flowers, and those bees are going to be helping us out so more nasturtium uh, now this is my angel trumpet one of my four angel trumpets and I still need to plant this out somewhere uh, thank you Jan for that uh, this is a uh, poinsettia and some of you may remember uh, this makes a great trap plant for whitefly look at little mr. push-up over there I love watching these little lizards. They are so funny. He is putting on a show for us. Couldn't resist that one. I'm about four feet away from him right now. Zoom all the way in. Anyway, I love the lizards. They're awesome. So, poinsettia is a trap plant for whitefly. Last year, I discovered this. Went out to my garden, went to water things. I bumped the branch, and a big old cloud of whitefly came out of the plant and then went back in. And uh, so someone 
recently asked a question. I said, well, what do you do with them? Oh, okay, let me finish the story. So anyway, I thought, I, I thought when I, I saw the big cloud of white fly cl come out and, and land again in about five minutes, I thought, oh no, I've got white fly. So I started looking at all my plants. I had 30 or 40 grow bags in a 14 to 16 foot area and uh, couldn't find white fly anywhere. So I watched in the whole season, poinsettia was covered with white fly, but they never got on anything else. So what that means is it's a trap plant. The white fly like that best, so they will hang out and make their home in that poinsettia. And someone said, well, what do you do with them then? I said, nothing. They're just going to live there. And it's going to attract any new white fly over there. They'd never, they never left. They loved that poinsettia, something fierce. It was awesome. So, yeah, I do like the uh, poinsettias in the garden. You'll see over there on the end of bed three, I've got another one in the red pot. So just look at that magnolia. These are beautiful. This little French magnolia. What a neat flower. So we've got, uh, here's the, that onion bed we started on and we have three layers in this bed. This first layer is all our cherry tomatoes. Then there's a layer of beans. And then there's another layer of indeterminate tomatoes over there. Now, all these are indeterminates, which means you need to have a place for them to grow and grow and grow. What will happen is they will grow up. In fact, you can see this one here is getting taller and taller and taller. It will keep growing up. What I'll do is I'll add to that string, bring that down and string it over here. So that tomato plant will start to be at an angle and at a longer angle. Eventually, these vines could get up to 15, 20 feet long depending on how well they grow. So what will happen is the vine will wrap around the ground, come around the backside, and eventually go back up to the to the pole at the top. That string will keep it, keep training it around. Now, I've got some mess over here. Again, I haven't done very much. I did put that one back up on the string, but what you do uh, as they, ooh, oh my, look at this guy. He is really unruly. Uh, and he's kind of choking out a, a branch down there. But what you do is you just keep it, you know, when it grows a little more, you carefully wrap it around like that. And I like to wrap underneath where the tomatoes are coming out right there. And then very carefully get it around behind there like that. Now these are a little wilty because they did just get watered this morning. Um, they will perk up today after the heat is done. But see these, this here, I've got to wrap all the way up on that one string. It's gotten away while I was gone. And in the process, you can see it's, it's a, uh, now a lot of people will, let me back up a little bit. A lot of people will one vine these indeterminate cherry tomatoes, which means you take off all the suckers. You, here's, here's a perfect example. You see, here's the leaf, here's the stem. Everybody who vlogs about this stuff says the same thing. This is the sucker in here. And what you do is you just take that sucker, bend it over sideways, and it just pops off. Keep those clean. Here's another one right here. There's the leaf on the bottom, and that sucker just gets pulled off. So one vining uh, is believed to keep the production up high. I am experimenting with a couple of two vining plants, like this one right here. Now, this one's gotten away. You can see here that uh, this is the leaf, it's always on the bottom. This is a sucker and it's gonna have to come out, but I'm not gonna just break it off because that will likely rip the plant. Here's another bigger sucker down in here. See, here's the, here's the stem, here's the leaf over here. Well, this sucker has gotta come off. Uh, and the thing that's really sad is it's already starting to set fruit on it, so I'm, they say if you take the suckers off, though, it, it's better in the long run for better production. So um, here we go. I'm saying pop that off with one hand. There we go. That's a perfect pop off. And I just leave them here. Now, let me tell you something. You want more plants? You want more free plants? Take this. Pinch off like that right there. Stick that in dirt. You'll have another plant. A perfect clone of the plant it came from. That's just enough leaves. You might even be able to take one more. Eh, I don't know, that'd be a little too much. But if you look real carefully, I don't know if the camera's picking it up or not. Let me zoom in a little bit here. Give me just a second to try to zoom in. If you zoom in, you can see all those little hairs on the stem, if it will focus. 
and it's sunny out, so I can't tell for sure if it's focusing, but there's little hairs along that those stems, and uh, every one of those little hairs is a root trying to grow. And so, um, those, uh, uh, those little roots, as soon as they're in the dirt and you keep them moist, they'll grow a new plant, a perfect little plant. But this, this row here is a combination of uh, sun gold, which is what these are. These are really delicious tomatoes. These sun gold, here's a, here's a ripe one down here. Uh, not quite like that. Oh, here's a good one. These sun gold are tasty. Little tinge of green right there, but it's soft. Just, just barely soft, so. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh lordy. Thank you for the tomato. Now this is the rack I posted on Facebook not long ago. This is the very rack that I posted on Facebook. And you can see there's just tons and tons of tomatoes on here. This is a super sweet 100, a little bit soft, just, just a little, there's no more green on it. Let me see if I can bite it open. Mmm, juicy. Mm-mm. -mm. Okay. That's awesome. But you can see here, there's that rack of tomatoes. If I come around here, there's another rack of tomatoes down here. There's another rack of tomatoes up here. There's another big rack down there. Can you see that? There's a, another rack of tomatoes that's been mostly eaten right here. There's another one that has been, oh, there's one more left down there. Has been all but one eaten. And I think there's another rack over on the other side here. Where'd it go? Now this is getting a little thick. These these spotty leaves under here, these need to get trimmed. Uh, that'll keep the uh, blight away from it. It's too close to the ground. And uh, you, you kind of want to keep this kind of stuff out of there. This is, this is bad stuff right here. So you just kind of pop that off there. Use your snips if you want to, uh, but keep the bottom cleaned up. But you can see how beautiful, look at that. Look at that, that's just gorgeous. That one's ready to eat. I'll save that for Mrs. Bowtie. There's another one that's ready to eat up in there. A few couple that are ready to eat there. But eventually, this uh, Super Sweet 100, that may be a Super Sweet 100 also. Um, in fact, I'm pretty sure that it is. Uh, this is a Sun Gold and there's another Sun Gold, but I bought three plants. I bought that one, I bought that one, and I bought that one. That's all I bought. And what I did is I just broke, broke off the suckers. Now I have a dozen plants, a dozen for the price of three. Good deal. Hello. Our neighbors are camping out overnight. I didn't realize that. More zinnias in the hanging pot here. What a beauty. These are more of the Suyo long cucumbers. These things are taken off. I haven't even looked at these yet. Oh, yep, sure enough. There's one taken off back there. Come around the back side here. That one's getting ready to take off. Looking good. Here's some Brussels sprouts. In fact, this is where the, um, the Brussels sprouts that I need to plant will go. Here's some of those onions. Oh, looky there, it's starting to bulb out. I thought this was a yellow onion. I believe it is. Doing an experiment here. Um, someone, I think it was uh, um, MI Gardener, Luke, said that uh, you should top your onions. And so I've been topping some of these and this is one of the ones I topped, but look, it's got three more huge long leaves on it already. So I'm gonna try topping the, oh, four. I'm gonna try topping those, but you can see there's bulbing happening down here. This is another one. That'll be growing. So the trellis is all beans. We haven't really grown much there. There are some beans on there. Uh, I am looking, looking, looking. It really hasn't started to produce quite yet, but it will. It is just growing all over the place, going crazy. I'm gonna have to disentangle some of those from the tomatoes and get them up here on this, on these overheads. So there's a 
Tabasco pepper. Ooh, it looks like it's gonna start putting out flowers. Oh, it, it has put out flowers, looky there. These two sticks, there was uh, something growing in there. That was probably chives. And here's that other kale. Then we start getting into the uh, um, Kellogg's breakfast tomatoes. Another cucumber. This thing is starting to take off. That's looking good, actually. Have to keep an eye on that one. A couple more Kellogg's breakfast tomatoes. These things really need to start getting tied up. I have to come out here with my box of string and put these up on strings. They are an indeterminate, so they grow and grow and grow. I need to get in there and pull some grass out down there. Oh, sure enough, we have beans. Lucky there. Nothing compared to what we're gonna see in a few minutes though. Some Cherokee purple. These Cherokee purple are taken off. Uh, this was a basil plant. It is gone and it is not shooting any more basil out. Cherokee purples all the way down here. This one's kind of struggling down here in the corner. Uh, but I put these Cherokee purples back here. It's underneath-ish this water oak. So it's going to get sun going in that section right there. The sun comes across up there. So it gets the sun there, and then as the sun is setting, it, it gets a little more sun. Cherokee purple don't like our heat and our long sun, sunny days. So trying to give it a little bit of a chance here, giving it its own microclimate back here, a little bit cooler. So just as a point of reference, this is right next to our potatoes, which need to be harvested. And of course we have the aloe patch, which is so overgrown. And one of the aloe stola, ball there we go so these were beautiful i want to one of these days i'll get in here and clean them out again so then we start the end of bed three and this is the end where we had uh several potato plants i'm having a dickens of a time keeping this stuff from growing out from underneath uh it is coming from underneath the bed it actually comes out down here a little bit but I think I've got that under control it'll eventually get under control um, this is a potato right here and then a row of look at those carrots those carrots are looking good here's some dill that's a I'm mean, not dill uh, parsley that's about to um, go to seed but these carrots I have not looked at these carrots yet I haven't done any thinning here and uh, one of the one of the uh, homestead channels uh, said, "Don't thin your carrots. The way you thin them is you eat the baby carrots." And so that's what I've decided to do with with all my carrots, and it's great. You just start pulling them, thinning them out, and eating them when they start to be edible. And what are baby carrots? They're just little carrots. So this will eventually be the pepper bed, and uh, I've I had a black jalapeno pepper in here, and it's obviously long dead um i had a, a sweet pepper grand bell mix right there and it's not gonna make it um i have a shishito over here that is looks like it is going to make it i'm gonna put it that other shishito there's a nada pino over there that not gonna make it but i found this uh cabinet on the side of the road and uh, so I'm using it to cover it and protect it from the magnolia leaves for my seedlings. Now we do have two peppers over here. Um, these are both, this is a uh, sweet pepper, uh, Grand Bell mix sweet pepper. And it's kind of coming along. It's having some, it's had a tough time, but it's starting to grow up. And that's an orange bell over there from seeds that I harvested. And that brings us to course here we have the blackberries a little path to get up to what is this this is corn and I was going to show you this one here looky here the uh the tassels are starting to appear how cool is that this one is a little bit ahead of the of the uh schedule by nearly by at least a foot I think 
but some of these are taller. These, it's kind of a mix in here, but it has a lot to do with the amount of sun that they have or don't have. And they are ready to take off. And of course we got our blackberries. These things are just, I can't get over how these things are growing. Look at the blackberries here. Just awesome. I love this bunch right here. There's that dino kale right in the middle of the blackberries. You come around this pomegranate and up inside the blackberry arbor. This, look at the size of the trunk on this dino kale. It is huge, massive. So kale is a two year, is a biennial plant, which means it grows for two years and it grows and produces leaves the first year and the second year it's supposed to go to go to seed. And I did pop off one seed stalk, but it was too late. This thing has already kind of changed flavor a little bit. And uh, so I'm gonna just let it go to seed and collect seeds for next year. Tons and tons of blackberries though. Look at all those. Wow. Anyway, so we have some uh, uh, I know you're yelling it at the screen. I, my brain is not talking to me. I forget what this is. Um, yarrow. It is yarrow growing here. Looks like a volunteer tomato in there. Is that possible? may have to control that. Um, and the yarrow is right above the goji berries. And the goji berries have just started to come out. Looky here. They'll get about two or three times that size. Very, very healthy. I don't, I don't know if they call it a superfood or what, but uh, beautiful little pink flowers. Another uh, angel trumpet. And then, this is where we're gonna end. Look at the beans. This is so cool. I've been waiting to finish this video before I harvested these. These are ready to go. But we got a, a meal's worth of beans here for Mrs. Bowtie and myself. These things have just taken off. They're beautiful. So we're going to eat these and see how they taste and uh, probably grow a lot more of these. These are um, the uh, Blue Lake Pole Stringless Bean to Livingston seed. We'll try to save some seeds from that this year too and we can have seeds for next year. But yeah, that's first time I've ever had this on, of my own. Tons and tons of beans. But just, just enough here for Jennifer and I to have a side. So, anyway. So, that's the end of the garden bed tour. And uh, we're very excited. We're eating off of this already. We're getting food. Um, it's great being able to eat off our own property. And, uh, have production out here. We're looking forward to other stuff. We did have a handful of uh, strawberries this morning, which were delish. Um, from the, they were all from the Walmart strawberries, but uh, um, they're getting sweeter. They're getting tastier. Oh lordy, they're great. So anyway, um, looks like we have tomatoes to harvest, beans to harvest. Uh, we're going to have another zucchini to harvest here in, in a few days. Um, I've, oh, oh, the blueberries. i got to harvest blueberries. Uh, I've got to climb up into the date palm tree and try to get rid of that vine that's growing up in there. A uh, lot to do. So, in, Including cutting the grass. And I, you probably noticed that I haven't cut the grass in a couple weeks. And that is true. 
So I think it's been 14 days or 12 days since I've cut the grass and I've been cutting it less seldom than most of my neighbors. Most people cut once a week. I try to cut once every 10 to 14 days. Um, I do like letting things go a little bit more than I probably should, but there you go. Anyway, be sure and uh, hit like on this video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Um, we're trying to get up to 100 subscribers so we can get our custom URL. And I'm looking forward to that day. Uh, tell your friends, share the video, ask others to subscribe. Uh, and uh, hopefully we can get this thing grown to where it's uh, something of value. If you have any questions, be sure to ask in the comments below. Uh, if you have any requests, put in the comments below. Uh, just be sure to just communicate. I try to respond to the comments when I can. Uh, so far, I've caught in every comment as best of my knowledge, and uh, we'll do that as long as possible. So I hope you all have a great day. I hope you have a great garden, and uh, hopefully this inspires you to bring something new to your garden. Uh, I know those Kajari melons that are coming up over there, I can't wait. I'm, we're gonna have to do a screen tasting of one of those. Um, and then the uh, Kiwano, I, I called the Kajari Kiwano, I keep getting it messed up. But the Kiwano is that jelly melon, the horned cucumber from the part two of this series. But anyway, so y'all have a great day and uh, be sure to check back and um, stay tuned. So we'll have another uh, video coming up here in a few days uh, about some of some scourges of Florida. And then uh, after that, the next thing I have planned is the June uh, garden tour. And I expect the June garden tour is going to be very different this year. This month is a little bit different than last month. I think from now to June, the end of June, we're going to see probably the biggest difference. So y'all have a blessed day and uh, garden on. Take care.